Hey everyone, I've seen lots of reviews on motorcycle security products on YouTube. Some of these are actually sponsored by the company. I'm here to give you an impartial review of some of the basics of security and possible pitfalls of not doing your own research. I've also put timestamps in the description in case you want to jump to a specific section. So here we go. There are so many levels of security for your bike, from leaving the keys in the ignition with a £20 note, to having chains, electric fences, rottweilers and the SAS camping there. I'm not going to be able to, in this upload, cover everything, so if you'd like to add any personal recommendations or rubbish products, please comment below. Before I go any further, I need to point out that I'm not telling thieves how to steal bikes. I think they already know this, and much more. I'm just letting you know what they do, and when people say, if they want it, they'll have it, to me, it's a little bit of a defeatist attitude. Yes, three blokes with cutting gear and professional tools will eventually get away with your pride and joy, but why make it easy for them? The very basic method of locking your bike is the steering lock. I can't believe the manufacturers make such a pathetic attempt at security, and this can be kicked off by the thief in seconds. Quick story here, I used to have a Suzuki GSX 550, steering locked and a big shackle D-lock through the front wheel. I had a video of this scumbag snapping the steering lock and then on seeing the shackle climbed off the bike and gave some gangster style symbol with his hand and walked away. I then had to drop the fearing off, drill out and replace the damaged ignition switch, repair the snap frame lugs and build it all back up again. All that hassle for the steering lock. It makes you wonder about not using the steering lock when using other locks with it, but the insurance won't pay out if you tell them it wasn't locked when stolen, but they'll have to prove that you didn't lock it if you tell them it was locked when it gets lifted into a van. The next weakest type of lock in my opinion is the front brake lever lock. Simply unscrewing the lever from the housing is the simplest way to get around this, or just one good whack with a hammer will break the actual lever and make light work of it for the thieves. Remember, the lowlifes don't care if they damage your bike, as long as they get away with it. Next up, you've got the basic disc locks with the pins that go through the disc holes. They're easy to carry and use. The common way of getting these off though includes a hammer and a chisel to break its casting at the bend at the back. The problem you'll get with disc locks is forgetting to take them off before riding away. Ask me how I know. Hi-Viz coiled reminders will help you there. Simply attach it to your lock and then the other end over your throttle and it'll also make it easy for others to know that you've got a lock fitted. Shackle locks or D locks can be a good deterrent but like anything you do get what you pay for. I thought I had a good shackle lock on my school gates but it disappeared within a few days and I've got no idea how they got it off. Alarm disc locks are slightly better as they at least make a sound when tampered with but can be oversensitive and you may get woken up at 3am by a cat brushing past it. A disc lock like my Oxford Big Boss alarm that I use has a thicker shackle so it's much more resistant to hand bolt croppers and can be used with a chain, but is useless if you use a cheap chain. Thieves will always go for the weakest part of any security system. The Big Boss I use has been known to be oversensitive, but battery life is good and you can also turn the shackle around to disable the alarm part of it if you need to. Next up we've got chains. There's a massive selection out there, so do your research. I use chains from a company called Almax. They're not cheap, but you really do get what you pay for. Disclaimer, Rowcraft Nottingham is not sponsored by Almax. Sold Secure is an independent security testing company. Generally, their awards can be trusted, but still do your own homework, as this Almax video destroys some gold approved chains very easily in seconds. This is the Oxford Monster. It retails for £98.95. It's Sold Secure and Thatcham approved, and it's arguably the most commonly used bike chain in the UK. This is 
is the Oxford Monster, crop one side and flash of the other side because it's through horns and rather brittle. I'll put a link to the full video in the description. Chaining your bike to an immovable object like a well-fitted ground anchor or even another bike greatly improves security as no matter what you lock your bike with, it could still be thrown into the back of a van within seconds. An issue with strong chains is portability due to the heavy weight and size of the chain and unless you have a top box or luggage it's not really practical to carry and I certainly wouldn't recommend that you wear the chain across your shoulders for safety reasons. When using chains it really helps to keep the chains off the ground because thieves with four foot bolt croppers find it much easier to have the chain on the floor for purchase. Try to use the shortest length of chain possible to keep it off the floor and if you can feed the chain through the frame or even the top part of your centre stand instead of the wheel when locking it to an immovable object that's a bonus. Bike alarms can be effective but aren't cheap and also have sensitivity issues. At my shop we've disconnected several earlier model data tool alarms because the immobiliser has kicked in leaving the rider without power whilst riding which is dangerous or unable to start it in the first place. Also, the alarms can drain bike batteries if the bike is stood for a while, and it's usually recommended to use a battery tender or a charger when not in use. They do have a battery backup in case your bike battery is disconnected. I've put a link in the suggestions above of an old video of us trying to destroy a data tool alarms a few years ago. Turn your volume down though, that's a warning. Garage door locks can also help you if you keep the bike garage. It also adds to the hassle you're creating for the low life. With trackers, you don't have to buy the expensive trackers with monthly subscriptions that you see advertised. You can buy them very cheaply online, buy a SIM card with a bit of credit on it, and after phoning that phone number on the SIM card, you'll receive a text back with Google coordinates, usually accurate to within a few feet. Some trackers even have a feature that can alert you by text if it senses vibration. Negatives on trackers include finding somewhere to hide the unit and if you don't use the bike very often they can also drain your battery. But you can get some rechargeable trackers with up to a 90 day battery life and it notifies you when the power drops below 20% which is very helpful. Thieves have been known to steal a bike and park it somewhere out of the way for a few days just in case it has a tracker fitted. The bottom line is you're simply looking to move the thief onto another bike. The more security you use, the harder you make it for them. Even several cheap locks around the bike will just cause more hassle for them. Battery powered grinders are easily purchased and considered nowadays. And as I mentioned earlier, nothing will stop them if they're determined, but the thief's biggest enemies are light, noise and time. Even putting a cover on your bike will hide what it is and parking your bike under a CCTV camera and a bright security light can't do any harm either. So I hope this has been helpful to you. Please comment with any additions below that you feel may help. Please feel free to comment with any additions below that you feel may help others and I'll speak to you soon. Bye bye.